What's up guys, Justin here with TheSketchUpEssentials.com back with another SketchUp quick tutorial for you. So in today's video, we're going to talk about a quick, easy way to add curtains or drapes inside of your SketchUp models. So if you're looking for more great SketchUp tips, make sure to check out my best SketchUp tips guide at TheSketchUpEssentials.com slash tips. Now let's go ahead and just jump into it. I want to start off by saying, yes, I'm aware SketchUp did a video on this method, and um, I had actually made a video on this method before that, but I wanted to go through it anyway, just because this was kind of something I was thinking about today with a model where I wanted to add some drapes. And so probably the easiest way to add drapes is going to be, if you think about drapes, they're basically a series of curves that are extruded up. And so what we're going to do is we're going to use the arc tool. So we're going to tap the A key, and we're just going to click once here, and once here, and we're just going to add an arc, and we're going to make it a half circle. So I've got a half circle right here, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the rotate tool in copy mode. So just select this, tap Q, and then click on this point, and click on this point, and tap the control key. So you can see how when you tap the control key, what that does is that creates a copy right here. So that allows me to create a copy like this. And then we're just going to take this, and we're going to use the move tool in copy mode. So select both of these, tap the M key, tap the control key, and move this right here. And then we're gonna type in something like times four and hit the enter key. So what we've done is we've created kind of a curving object right here. And you can probably see this a little bit better if I go to, um, let's go to monochrome mode. So you can see this in here. So monochrome mode allows you to see just your faces and not your textures. And so what we have here is we have this curving face and there's a few different ways or this curving object. And probably the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna put it in a group. So I'm just going to select all of this and I'm going to put it in a group. That way I don't have to worry about it accidentally merging with other pieces of geometry or accidentally selecting the wrong thing. But what I'm going to do in here is you can't really extrude this up right now because it's a series of edges. Um, you can use something like extrude tools in order to do that. If that's something you're interested in, leave a comment down below and I can show you how to do that. But what we want to do in this particular situation is we want to draw a line off of this edge along the red axis and then we want to draw a line this way and I'm just holding the shift key in order to lock that inference to the green axis and then I'm going to draw this so this is filled in well now that it's filled in I can push pull this up and down in order to create my drape. So I could make it go all the way up here, I could make it go to about right here, which is I think, which is where I think I'm gonna do that. So you can see how right now this doesn't really look like drapes. And that's okay, because what we're gonna do is we're gonna erase out this line and the edges that made up that face over here. So you can see I can erase this out here, I can erase this out here, and that leaves us with this nice kind of curving drapes shape. And the one thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna triple click in here and I'm gonna right click just to reverse the faces. And we can go ahead and we can go back and turn on shaded with texture mode now so you can kind of see what we're looking at. So that gives us a series of drapes that you could then come in here and you could move back further against your window or something like that. So you probably don't want it quite intersecting with this wall so maybe move it until it's intersecting and then move it off the wall a little bit so what that does is that gives you the illusion of some drapes over here in the corner so if you wanted to just create the drapes like this you could probably draw a rod or something like that to make this look a little bit more realistic um, but the way that we have this right here this works pretty nicely so now what I want to do though is let's say that we wanted these drapes to kind of taper. So there's a couple different ways we could do that. So the first thing I'm going to do is if I click and drag across just this edge down here and I use the scale tool, I could scale this so that my drapes kind of taper at the bottom so they look a little less kind of uniform and straight up and down. So you could use the scale tool in order to do that. However, let's do something even more complex. So let's create these drapes as if they've been pulled across and kind of blocked over here. So the way that you can do that is you can click and, drag, click and drag a box around these lines at the bottom. And then if we use the move tool in copy mode to move this up like this, you can see how what we've done is we've actually split our geometry. So I moved a copy of this straight up until it's in the middle of my drapes. And so now we can do the same kind of thing that we did before where we can select this, 
we can use the scale tool and we can scale it across. So you can see how you can use this to scale this as if these drapes had been kind of drawn and then tied off. And then you could adjust this after the fact because this geometry is sticky just by moving this up and down. So if you wanted this to be kind of halfway across, you could move that down right here. And you can see how this is kind of auto folding that geometry um, so that it's kind of, um, so that it's been pulled across here. And so if you wanted to, you could do the same thing where you could uh, make another copy. And let's say you wanted these drapes to do something else at the bottom, you could kind of split them again. You see, I'm just using this geometry in order to split these faces. So you can kind of make this look however you want. You could then model in, if you wanted like an oval or something like that, you could use the follow me tool to kind of block this off. And then the last thing we could do if we were interested in doing this is we could actually apply like a material to it. So let's say, and this gets a little bit tricky um, when you deal with materials that are a whole lot of like repeating shapes because the UV mapping is weird and I don't want to get into UV mapping in this video. Um, but you can see if I try to apply this, this gets, this gets applied kind of funny. That's because SketchUp doesn't know how to apply the uh, material to this face. And there's a few ways around that, but I'm not going to talk about that in this video. Um, instead, we're just going to use one of the more uniform textures. So one of the ones where if you kind of zoom in, you can't really see that the UV mapping isn't right. But let's say you wanted this to be a little bit transparent. What you could do is you could select this material and then you can go into your edit mode and you could turn your opacity down. So if you wanted these drapes to be kind of see-through, you could turn the opacity of your material down, which will allow light to travel through it. So you could use this method on every one of these windows in order to create some quick drapes inside of your model. The other thing you might want to consider doing is you might want to consider applying this material to the back side as well as the front side, just so you don't have that weird kind of gray color on the back side inside of your building. So that's where I'm gonna end this video. Leave a comment below and let me know what you thought. Did you know about this method? Um, are there other ways you're using to create drapes? I know Clothworks is a good one. I might, I might do another video on that pretty soon. But leave a comment below and let me know what you thought. If you like what I'm doing on this channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Every little bit helps, even if it's only a dollar a month. So make sure you check out that link in the notes down below. But in any case, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.